everyone. Uh, welcome to the session about web interface. Uh, my name is Daniel Webb, and I run my own company in uh, Norway. I work as a Citrix instructor and uh, consultant. And then um, Alex asked me to do a presentation on web interface, so I thought that'd be a cool thing to do. And then um, the only thing is, I got a name badge like all of you, and mine says no presenter. <laughs> I'm a bit offended by that. <laughs> I think it's a country code. <laughs> and all my friends from Norway says no attendees. <laughs> so we're not really here. <laughs> but if you have any questions, just uh, keep a comment, and I'll, I hope I um, learn something new. To, Few of you. How many of you work with web interface on a regular basis? That's pretty much everyone. Cool. So I'll skip the basics because all of you know what the web interface is and what it does. So what I thought we'd go through is what's new in web interface 5.4. How many of you just upgraded and didn't really look at what's new? Yes. One, two, three, more, <laughs> more. <laughs> yeah. So that's basically what we do uh, <laughs> uh, from time to time. We upgrade, there's a new version, the layout changes, but what's, what's changed behind the scenes? What's new in, the, uh, in this release? So I thought we'd look at what's new in 5.04. Um, I think there's a new version coming, um, maybe not this month, but in not too long a time. Uh, some rumors that there might be a new version coming up. Um, so I show some tips and tricks, some hidden features, um, a few gotchas with um, integration with Access Gateway, a few things you should be aware of, and um, some troubleshooting and best practice. According to my work, you guys might have other ideas. New features. There's a security patch, and we'll look at that. Um, new interface. The interface has changed. Like to do. Um, we have session sharing for VM hosted apps. I'll have a quick look at that as well. Multiple desktop access for users. When you're using Send Desktop, you can access two desktops from the same desktop group. Earlier, you could just access one. Um, better support for access gateway and the uh, ability to set more values in the web interface. More values we can set. We'll start with the security patch. File sign in, look at that as well. Um, the security patch uh, includes a cross site vulnerability. So, everyone that's running 5.0 to 5.3 are recommended to upgrade to 5.4. And uh, <coughs> that means that you'll go from this design, which you probably customized, you put in a logo, you made everything look nice and smooth, and then you have to go to this. You have to do it again. <laughs> I know quite a few customers um, won't be too happy about that. So um, there should be a fix for 5.3 at least, so you can apply the security patch. But unfortunately, there isn't. So I have to go to the new look. But there are a few themes around and a few customization that can make it look a bit more like the old version. Yep. And you can't use the old one for the new one. Uh, no, it's not a it's not a theme. You can select. Uh, oh, your own customizations. I mean, yeah, you can use your the same customizations, but if they're according to this color scheme, you have to change your logos and yeah, you can still use the same same techniques to um, to change the web interface. So technically, it's the same. Technically, it's the same. It's just the layout that's been redesigned. And uh, this one is more optimized for uh, smartphones and mobiles and things, but we'll get into that as well. Um, yeah, VM hosted apps. How many has used VM hosted apps? <laughs> Hands up. That's just a few. It's quite a cool feature, actually. It's um, you're running send this. If you're running send desktop, you get the full desktop. If you're running VM hosted apps, you can publish applications directly from an XP or Windows 7 machine without using a SEN desktop license. You're using SEN app licenses to publish applications from an XP or Windows 7 machine. So say you have one application that you struggle with uh, to get to work on SEN app, you can install it in a SEN desktop environment 
and you sign up licensing. So you don't have to buy some desktop. And you publish SAP or something from XP 32 bit when you can run it inside the ICA session, so ICA in ICA, or directly from the web interface. It's a cool feature. It's a shame not me more people are using it. Um, it's another thing to handle in the environment as well. So. Yeah. And now we can publish more than one application uh, from that XP machine. So we can publish SAP and AutoCAD, for example. Earlier we could just publish one application from one XP or Windows 7 machine. Now we can have multiple and we use session sharing as with normal setup, mm -hmm. which is quite cool. And the licensing is the same? License. Yes. So if you start a setup session and a VM hosted app session, you're just using one license. That's quite neat. Multiple desktops. Users can now access the same desktop twice from a full desktop group. Um, I haven't really seen that as a problem so far. I <laughs> don't know why I would open two of the same, but um, different customers, different requirements. So um, might be that you want to run a report here and you want it to stay on one screen and then you're working on the other one. Maybe that was a side effect or some other change this year. No, I, I, it's, 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 it's mostly talking to developers. Yeah, if you got developer groups, then you got a bunch of VMs. So yeah. So instead of having two desktop groups and accessing two, you can now do this from the same. Yeah. yeah. So probably a requirement from one or two customers. In, in <laughs> <laughs> uh, improved smart card support supports uh, UPN and user at domain, and it's now uh, FIPS standard, so it should be uh, better integrated. I haven't really found much documentation about uh, what smart cards and uh, whatnot should work, but if they're FIPS compliant, it should should now work at least. Uh, we have now more values we can set in the web interface. Earlier, we could see set um, what applications are supposed to be on your desktop and what are supposed to be in your start menu, and on the web interface, we could override the setup configuration. Now we have the same for connection speed, color quality, and sound. So we can override that uh, directly here. Um, so you see we have use farm settings, or we can override it. So if you have a web interface site for external users, we can set the uh, sound quality to low to make sure um, they use less bandwidth when they're working from home or from a laptop or 3G. So it's quite handy. We could, of course, do that with policies as well, and that we can override it with web interface. More uh, customizations we can do. ICA file signing. Um, for security reasons, we can now sign the actual ICA file delivered down to the uh, client. And we do that with um, a merchandising server, the ADM file for the ICA client, and the web interface 5.4. So in web interface 5.4, we will put a certificate and enable this. And we would send that certificate out to the end user with merchandising server. And using GPO, we can say that the user can only access ICA files that are certified by this certificate. So if the user tries to start an ICA file to a farm somewhere else in the world, they will get access denied because it's not a trusted um, Citrix farm. Would many of your customers use the merchandising server? Um, there, there's a session about that later today, is it not? Tomorrow. Tomorrow? Tomorrow. Yeah. Um, I, I see a few customers in Norway are starting to use merchandising server. Yeah. Um, there's a few things that uh, changes when they use merchandising server, but I'm sure you'll get into that. <laughs> Uh, actually one customer doesn't like that you can't click uh, in the system tray and get your applications up and that's <laughs> the reason for not using it so it won't, it won't judge you much does itself for that soon no <laughs> oh, that will change so anyway holding up sandbags <laughs> <laughs> all right so they might have to get used to that anyway <laughs> all right but um, um 
you can probably get around this without merchandising server as well. There, I, I think there is an, uh, there is an, another idea in which will let you push the uh, certificate. But, well, it's 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 the uh, the thumbprint of the certificate. All right, so you can do that with an ADM as well. Yeah, brilliant. I, I think so. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, for troubleshooting, um, I wrote that when I sent it to Alex, and I, <laughs> I don't really troubleshoot much on the web interface. It's uh, Either the event log on the web interface, or the event log on the access gateway or secure gateway where I would look. Um, there's also a list from Citrix that shows you all the error messages the web interface will um, will show you, and it will tell you what that uh, error message uh, means. So normally, I would just look in the event log and see what happened, what failed, and then um, troubleshoot from there. There's not uh, that many other places to look, uh, unless you get an IIS uh, error message, of course. Yeah. I was going to say there is a um, you can turn on more more tracing from within Web Interface itself. Mm -hmm. In the Web Conf file, there's a section you can you can edit to turn on tracing. That's actually quite useful. Yeah, uh, I saw that, but I've never actually turned it on. So uh, try, try. What sort of fun are you going to get? <laughs> yeah. But that, that's normally where I would look for for editor messages. I would start there and then yeah, do yeah. a trace if you need to, of course. I have, I have a few tips and tricks. Uh, hopefully, there's something new for everyone. Um, if you're using web interface 5. something and you're still running presentation server 4.0, you will get an error message when you're trying to start an application from that old set, uh, presentation server farm. You can just add, uh, change one line, require launch reference, go from on to off, and it would work perfectly fine. Uh, the only thing I've seen is when you log off the web interface, it will also close down your applications. Or if your web interface times out, I also, I also see that it will close down your apps. So test that in a, a demo before you set it in production, because that can be quite a bit uh, annoying. Uh, this will also not make the presentation server for an old farm work on an iPad. Uh, it's not very stable. <laughs> I've tried it, but it does actually work. You get logged on and you can open your Outlook and then your ICA session will terminate. Maybe. Uh, that's what happened in my customer environment. <laughs> not sure why. Uh, you can change the browser title. Just one key to change the browser title. When it says on top of your uh, Internet Explorer. Uh, you can change the uh, web interface client name. In the web interface, we can say that it should override the ICA client name. Normally, that would be your computer. So if your computer is called laptop, in your uh, setup console, you would say laptop is the connected device. For external users, we quite often turn on override. So all the clients that log on from the web interface, they get WI and um, underscore, and then a random name. So you see that these are external users, so these are accessing it from the web interface. We can change this, uh, this value, so it doesn't say WI, we can change it so it says WO, W0. It can be any longer, but we can change it. And the reason why we want to change it in some cases is that we have multiple web interfaces. So when the user logs on, we see W0, and we know that's users from Norway. When we see W1, that's users from Ireland. So we can change this regard, um, according to what web interface they're logging on from, and then we can sort users based on that. But it has to be two characters long, right? Yeah, just two characters. Okay, not no different. <laughs> and with this, we can use both um, uh, zone preference and failover, worker groups in Zenab 6, and we can also apply policies based on this if we're accessing uh, the Zenab farm through an access gateway. So we can differentiate what web interface you log on through. If you're getting local disks or not, if you have to have this antivirus or not, we can we can make it even more flexible.